Hi, my name's Ed Gregory from Photos in Color, and today I'm going to show you how to use collections in Lightroom. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go through how to work with collections in Lightroom. Now, collections can be found inside the library module, and it is a way of sorting out your images so they're quick to find, easily categorized, and just, you, you can always find the images you want to quickly without having to know where the original image is. It's really simple, and let me show you how. So here we go, here we are in the library module in Lightroom. Now, if you remember, when we import our, our, our images, go into the current catalog, okay? So we, there's only 11 images in this catalog, and they go inside our folders. So these, it's my YouTube training, so it's on, the, on my Macintosh HD, and it's under YouTube training folder. So that's the only folder I have. Now on other catalogs, I have hundreds of folders, but I wanted to keep this really simple. So now we know that these images here are in this folder. But if you imagine here, if I have photographs, you know, from 30 different albums, I can't remember where where this particular image is or this image of this dancer actually is. And so what I will use is something called collections. Now what collections does is it goes through the folders and it pulls all the images into one place. So let's just make one. So first of all, we hit the plus side here and let's just create a collection, the most basic type. And I'm going to call this one landscape. So if we call this landscapes, like so, and that's just the way it goes. So I've actually got, because this image was selected, that goes straight into landscape. So if I hit delete, now this has gone from the, that collection, but if I go back here, the image still exists. So it hasn't actually moved from any of my folders. Does that make sense? So for example, now I have one called landscapes. I can just, it's come up just here called landscapes. So I can take something which is a landscape. So for example, this image is a landscape and I can drag this image and I can drop it into landscapes. Now, if I click into landscapes, there it is. And I have one image inside. So that's really simple. Now, that would obviously take a long time dragging an image from here and putting it up here. Dragging an image would just take forever. So instead, if we were to hover over this landscapes folder, hit um, right, right click, and then what we're going to do for this one is set as target collection. So click on that. And then next to here, now we have this plus sign. That means that's where these images go. So I come back to this place here and any image that I want to go in there, I just have to press the letter B, okay? Um, B for Bob. So this image I want to go in there, I hit B and look up here where it says number one, that's going to say number two. Now this image is still here, hasn't moved. It's just been added to this collection. Now, importantly, Lightroom isn't duplicating these images. You're not wasting hard drives. It just has a tiny little file somewhere in its system that remembers all of these images. So you're not creating more images at all, which means these photos can go into as many different collections as you want without creating more space. So that's basic collections, really simple. So for example, we could make another one of these. So we hit plus create collection and we could call it uh, portraits like so so now we have two different ones okay we have one for landscapes and one for portraits so if we come up here we'll set the portraits one now and we'll set his target collection come back up here and portraits this one can be a portrait so hit b and we're going to portraits and now this one will be a portrait too now in my folder all of these images are now still here i have my portraits and my landscapes all here. So, but if I go to my collections, landscapes has only landscapes and portraits have only portraits, extremely powerful. Now you can imagine this could get into a huge list of different things very quickly. So how do we get around that? Well, what we do is we create a um, collection set. So if we were to call this say portfolio, because this could be my portfolio, for example, We'll call it portfolio, click on this. And now what we see is we have a collection set at the top called portfolio. 
But if I was to take landscapes and drag it and put it into portfolio and portraits and drag it and put it into portfolio, I can now close this and you can see it's going to keep things very organized. It's like a file management system. And I can go in and then I've got my landscapes and my portraits and the portraits has a plus, which means that's my target collection if I ever press the, let the, the letter B. Really, really powerful. Now, that's not where this ends. This keeps on going. It's so incredibly powerful. The next thing I'm going to show you, the final thing I'm going to show you here, is you hit plus and then you can create a smart collection. Now what a smart collection does is rather than you having to go through and select this image and this image and this image and press B each time for it to go, what this can do is as you start using different ways of star rating your images or adding colors to your images or you might want different sizes of images or images from certain dates, you just have to make one rule, okay? That's what it's called and then all that happens is it searches all your images and makes that collection. It's that simple. So for example, let's go in here. We're going to create a, a collection set. Um, we're going to create this smart collection inside portfolio. And we're going to call this five, um, five stars. Nice and simple. So match all. So that's all images in this catalog. If we look here, rating is what I'm going to select. That's my star rating. So I can have one stars, two stars, all the way up to five stars. This is only going to collect images with five stars. Now, other things I can do is if there's a pick, so that's using the P button, puts a little flag on the image, say it's been picked, you can make one of all of those things. You can go for your um, text color or your label text, like so many different things you can select. Source, so where is this image stored? The type of file, so is it a, um, DNG file or a JPEG file or something like this, the date that it was taken. So you might want to find all the images from a holiday. Put in your holiday dates and it'll bring all the images in. Really is amazing. So for example, match all rules, a star rating that is greater than, greater or equal to five stars. Really simple. So let's, now I could actually create more so I could add um, and, and another one here, okay? And what I would do there is I could add in from a certain date or a certain time, but we're just gonna leave this simple. So if I create this now, so that's been created. Now there's nothing in there because I have nothing with star ratings. So let's come back to this and let's give this image here a star rating of five. So I hit the number five. Now this image now, you can see it says five stars, five star rating, fantastic. Now if I go to my smart collections, this is where it gets clever, five stars, click on that, and that image now lives with inside this. However, it hasn't been put anywhere else. However, again, we can now have things in multiple collections. So now maybe this tree, I want this to have a five star rating, okay? Doesn't move from this collection, doesn't move from the Macintosh HD from where it's stored, but if I go back to five stars, you can see these two images are now there. Finally, look at a portrait. Maybe this image, I'm gonna give it a four star rating. If I give this one a four star rating, set rating to four, you can see this here, go to my five stars and it hasn't appeared. That's because it didn't fit within those parameters. So you can see here that by using this, you can build an amazing, um, you can collect all your images into these different folders without having to replicate or manage it actually on your computer. You can do it all within Lightroom. And this really is hugely powerful. For me, I keep my portfolio and divide everything up very quickly so I can show it to clients, so I can easily find things for printing or anything like that. So that's my video on collections in Lightroom. If you have any questions, please just ask me a question below. I will always respond to you. Um, also, you can hit subscribe. That would be great. Give me a thumbs up to say you liked this video and check back because I've got so much, so many more videos on their way. My name is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com.